Yeah, so like good evening to all and uh, welcome to the uh, Geek Night event. So after a long break, I think uh, we are uh, trying to resume this Geek Night event. And uh, uh, I think most of you would know uh, what this uh, Geek Night is about. And just for people who are uh, first to this uh, event, right? So Geek Night is one of the um, like uh, community which we established here, uh, like uh, and which has a very good, uh, uh, like very big uh, community in Coimbatore at least. Uh, and we were also organizing uh, like monthly one event, uh, like uh, starting from this of office uh, was established like around 2017. From that, then onwards, we were uh, having this Geek Night in Coimbatore. Uh, but yeah, recently we were uh, like um, not uh, like we were not here actively doing this uh, for some time. But again, we are going to resume this uh, event going forward, and this will be a monthly event. And um, like anyone uh, like uh, who are interested uh, to present any of the topics, right? Even the external participants, not only the thought workers, who whoever are interested. They can reach out to us. Uh, might be like uh, we will call back you once the topics are uh, like validated, and uh, we'll get back to you. And uh, other thing is like uh, this uh, uh, community, right? Uh, we used to uh, get back, like uh, discuss on most of the latest uh, technology trends and other things, and even the tools that are uh, existing in markets and other things. So yeah, I think we will uh, try to make this community even more vibrant going forward. Uh, welcome uh, one and all present here today for this event. And I will hand over to Sri Jayan for uh, like presenting the um, interesting topic. Uh, he will take forward from here. Thank you. Thank you, Shakish. Uh, I think today we are all assembled here to see about like, uh, let's start from the topic. Uh, build your multilingual support bot with RAG, right? We are uh, the main agenda of the event is like multilingual support bot and the rag. Using the multilingual and rag, we are going to build our own uh, support bot. Like uh, to see the uh, teaser or a trailer of our uh, whole session, right? Uh, it will be like converting all your uh, text to what you have as a question to a numbers. Uh, numbers will be searched in a database. After searching in that database, right? That database will be giving us some uh, again a numbers. That numbers, if we get uh, uh, some meaningful insights, we can t change it to meaningful insight. I know you would have not understand what's happened here, uh, but I will explain each and every concept like uh, how are we converting the numbers? Uh, I mean, text to numbers, numbers to again searching in database. Everything will be we can go in a detail hands on. Uh, let me introduce myself. I am Srijan Rajendran, working as an AI engineer at ThoughtWorks. Uh, let's uh, let's start. Uh, going into the topic. Okay, let me start with the retrieval augmented generation. As we saw, there are major topics involved in a multilingual and the RAG concept. I'm starting with uh, uh, retrieval augmented generation RAG. Okay. Well, let me, as I as I saw, as we saw the uh, RAG slide, and we are more, we are starting with the AI rate. I just thought to. Uh, start with a high level of vision and just go deep inside each and every things. Uh, let me start with uh, what to say. Uh, artificial intelligence or AI is a technology which is used to, to train uh, machines to simulate human uh, behavior, actually. That is the overall aim of uh, AI. Uh, it may be any AI, uh, I mean, generative AI, deep learning, machine learning, everything, but its main task is to uh, simulate what humans do. Uh, that is the uh, main aim of uh, AI. Uh, here I have mentioned two uh, AI. One is narrow AI, which is known as single task performer. Before this AI boom, right, uh, the, uh, we all have some uh, machine learning uh, models or deep learning models, which we will be, uh, which are be able to do only single task actually. Uh, a single task performer. For an example, if I want to say uh, we are uh, we have built a deep learning model which is uh, able to uh, detect uh, humans, right? Its task is only one thing. Its aim is to detect humans. That's it. Uh, none, uh, other than that, it is not able to it is not able to do anything. Uh, or if we are taking a sales prediction model, it is only going to predict the sales of the next month. Uh, that is its overall aim of that model. So it is known as uh, narrow narrow AI, which is a single task performer. 
then we the latest after 2022 uh, november right we we all go, got to know a new term known as generative ai generative ai is i here mentioned as multitask performer like it is it will be able to do multiple things at a, at the same time like uh, uh, if we are trying to give a whole story to the generative ai like an llm right it will be able to, and if we are asking for it to summarize first of all it need to understand the content and it must be able to pick out what are the important words and what are the important sentence in the content then it it is it will be able to summarize the content then then only it will give us the an output to us so it is a multitask performer when when it comes to uh, uh, image uh, image creation or image understanding in generative ai itself right it is like understanding the whole image it is uh, if we are passing an image to a generative ai image generative ai model right uh, and asking it to is there a person over there it could be able to say yes or no what is the color of the shirt the person wearing it could be able to say the color of the uh, person uh, or if you are asking like uh, is the is a is there a bicycle in the image it could be able to do so we are we have not the trained the generative ai model for specifically uh, checking is there a bicycle is there a person it uh, we have trained only one model but we are asking n number of questions but it, it was it will be able to pe perform the action also so only we are calling it as multitask performer over here okay right then we move with the what is llm uh, llm is something like uh, llm is a probabilistic model which will be generating probabilities for the next word what is what it is going to generate Uh, for an example right uh, we give bangalore is a city in right this will be input of the user and it will generate some top probabilities what would be the next word of this sentence and it will give the highest probability as bangalore right we can see here ba bangalore is a city in and we, that is an uh, that is the prompt to the llm and it will be able to generate uh next token because it is trained on the large text data so it able to easily identify the patterns between each and every word so it can e able to easily answer after this word what will be the next word right so it is basically doing the probability uh it will generate a probability between words that is the main aim to see like a demo right this is what happening inside the llm if you are giving as an input right bangalore is a city in basically there will be probability for so many words like uh, india has the uh, uh, probability of 0.4 which is a 40% and next is south india is 30% and karnataka is uh, 15% and chennai is 5% and world is uh, 1% basically these all words will be related to somewhere in, in to bangalore or the sentence what we have given and uh, it will retrieve the uh, word which is more related to, uh, to or which has the highest probability it will be uh returning uh, to the from the llm this is what happening inside the llm basically it is a uh, may, i mean what can we can say like it is a probability predictor between words that that's that's it happening inside the llm okay you are what you eat uh this term refers like uh what you given to the llm as a training data right it will be able to do only what it can actually train on like uh, llms are basically mostly trained on english uh, level datas which is uh, uh, which can able to do uh, multiple task on english but not other than any languages like uh, uh, japanese or french uh, th this is the main thing like what i'm saying is the data what you provide will uh, it is what understanding on that the data is in the training data so you can uh, it can answer the questions which is related to the training data due to our training data is so massive on internet scale data it could answer all the things what we are asking or uh, so only uh, llms are trained on large amount of data right okay let's uh, go inside what is uh, rag uh, for an example right if if we are starting a company today uh, uh, like uh, we have our own written policies we have our own privacy policies uh, for, uh, which the company started today, just today Uh, but the llm have, will be up to the knowledge of some certain uh, time period only like uh, we have also seen in chat gpt sometimes the response comes like uh, uh, sorry i have the knowledge up to level of uh, september 2023 or uh, september 2021 anything but uh, 
here why the rags come inside here right we could be able to uh, give our own data to the llm so that it could understand what the question is uh, i mean what the user is asking as a question and answer the data which is uh, at least available in the data source what we we have provided maybe our data source would be the latest data what we had at the current age like uh, if we are if we are starting the company right and we could provide the details of the company like uh, uh, what is uh, i mean uh, i mean what is the privacy policy and what is the return policy and all if we are providing as a data source input right it would be able to answer the questions more easily uh, today we are going to see how we are going to uh, give the data as an input how it is going to store in the most effective method uh, that all the things we are going to see today okay why uh, why rag here why basically the uh, the question why you would solve uh, most of the pro i mean problems in the uh, in our mind like uh, why rag means the basic thing is to improve the language i mean large language model accuracy like uh, basic uh, if we are asking some questions which is not trained in its data right it will be giving a, giving us an uh, wrong in uh, wrong output or uh, some uh, hallucinated answer but uh, the data source what we we have as a data source what we provide right it could be answering on that so that it could be easily able to answer like uh, how we are uh, improving the accuracy for the lang large language model is like using leveraging external data i mean knowledge source which is the document which we are providing after that when it comes to by doing these both things right we can improve the domain specific performance uh, we can uh, domain specific performance is not only like uh, uh, healthcare domain or uh, industrial domain it's not like that it is like uh, if we if we consider our company alone as a domain right that is also an improvement over there because it may, it may not know about our company that much so we, if we are providing information about our company so it could uh, able to easily uh, pick up what is uh, about the company the main thing uh, other than this is like uh, we as i already said like uh, if we what the data we provide as a training right it could answer from that only but if we want our own company data to be learned by llms right there are two methods one is like fine tuning which is more cost, it is not at all cost effective and it takes lot of resources and time effective also it is not like that so only we are just uh, rather than implementing fine tuning we are just moving with the rag and uh, i have included like improved trust and transparency Th this line is uh, somewhat controversial line because llms are always probabilistic uh, it cannot answer uh, it may say the answer like true but it may not be true but here when we are using rag system right we can easily show the users also or uh, we can easily trace out from which paragraph or which pdf uh, this uh, this answer is generated what is the source of the data what it has produced we can easily figure out uh, uh, using this rag system that's why i have added that uh, okay uh, here is the simple rag architecture uh, we can split up this into two parts like first part will be do from documents splitting into chunk changing into embeddings and vector and storing it into vector database from up to this may we consider let, let's consider as a part one and the second part is the user queries changing into embeddings uh, retrieving the context Uh, moving to prompt template and llm answer giving out answer will be the second part basically what here we we are doing right uh, first of all we need to have the documents or the pdf uh, to be passed into the llms or uh, passed into the rag system so after that we need to split it into chunks chunks are none other than uh, parts of uh, uh, document what we provide like if we have a, a 10 paragraph right each paragraph uh, we need, we can split it out into each paragraph so th that each paragraph is called as chunk over here we can see we can see why we need to chunk uh, and wha what is an example of chunk and all we can see in uh, later period uh, but when it after the splitting into chunks right we ne we need to convert that into embeddings basically i showed in the initial slides right embeddings are none other than like converting the text data into uh, numerical format like uh, vectors basically it is none other than a, there will be model sitting machine learning model sitting inside it it is a single task performer basically its duty is to get text high level text data as input and give a numerical vector data as an output uh, the text data length may be uh, dynamic uh, in, in, uh, like uh, it can contain 100 words or 500 words that may be a dynamic but the output which is coming from this embedding model right that would be a fixed number of output like uh, uh, the vectors length will be like 
uh, 500 or uh, 760 is 64 anything can be that is uh, that is depends upon the model we use okay after that we will storing the both chunk and the embedding in the vector database after we are storing that right uh, maybe we can consider this embedding as an index to the uh, chunk what we are, what we are going to store okay both the things will be stored in the vector database after this will be the back end part which is which will be completed after that user can ask a query uh, like uh, uh, like how many parameters are there in uh, group 0 this is a model which was generated uh, by i mean created by twitter uh, like uh, this will be converted again into embedding basically what will, what will be happening is like uh, the it will compare the both the embeddings in the vector database and the questions uh, vector embeddings after that it will retrieve some chunk chunk uh, chunk is none other than like uh, a paragraph let's consider like that it may con contain any other information also y here we can have the group zeros para uh, parameters is like uh, 33 billion parameter we can uh, we are also having that llama 2 uh, parameters also the 70 billion parameter uh, also is available but this is uh, information we will pass this information to the prompt template and again the query will also be passed to the a prompt template prompt template is basically like we are saying some llms right uh, we will pass some error and uh, we will say like uh, can you solve this error can you solve this error is something like uh, related to prompt template but here we will be setting like uh, you are a useful helpful assistant uh, where you will be like uh, uh, interacting with live customers you will be receiving the customers uh, i mean customers query and the info, uh, uh, the answer will also be context answer will also be provided you, your only duty is to answer the question which is more related to the content okay this this will be the prompt template that prompt template will be move to the LLM, then LLM will be answering the exact answer. The group zero prototype LLM mentioned here has the 33 billion parameter. That is the exact answer which is needed for, for the user. Uh, that is happening over here. This is the overall architecture of the RAC system. Uh, let's deep dive into the each and every parts and see how it moves. Okay, let's see how to implement it also. Okay. This is part one. Uh, which I mentioned uh, storing the data from uh, exactly from like uh, taking the documents and uh, until to uh, storing it in vector database. Okay. It has uh, actually the part one contains four major uh, parts. First is uh, loading the data. Loading the data means like uh, it, it's in PDF format or uh, basically when it comes to storing like this uh, rack system and all, right? We can also implement images and videos all and all in, in this rack system. But this was this is being in implementation implementation by Google for several years. But today we are going to see about the uh, text data and text unstructured data. Uh, basically, uh, the loading part uh, contains this. Then when it comes to splitting, right? As I mentioned, we are splitting that into chunks. After loading the text doc document, we will be splitting into uh, several parts for uh, sto uh, for effective storing method. Then that each and every chunk will be passed to uh, uh, passed to an embedding model, which will convert the chunk into an embedding vector. Can you understand, right? This is the third part of this part one. So after converting this uh, chunk into vectors, right? The next duty is to easily store it in the vector databases. Like each and every chunk will be like an index over there, and it will the I mean uh, each and every embedding will be like an index over there, and the chunk will be the value part of the in index. As we see, like okay, let's still more deep dive. Like uh, the input of uh, the the input of the data would be like. Uh, uh, PDF text format. End of the day, we will be converting everything into a text uh, TXT file, so that only it will be easy for uh, our next process to chunk it more. Uh, in the chunking itself has a lot of strategy, but uh, it it may be like uh, a JSON format also. But end of the day, we we need to load the data in the text file, so that uh, we must extract all the important things over there, and uh, we can store it. Like uh, you can also uh, have the URL and parse the data in the website and store it. We will be getting it as an HTML file, but we need to extract the exact content what we need to store in the vector database for the RAG system. Uh, so after that only. We, it will be in an effective method. Okay, this is the loading part. Then comes the chunking strategy. Uh, as I already said, uh, why not uh, chunking? Because it will not be like an uh, effective method. Think of like you have uh, 100 records or 200 records which is stored in a single row. If you want to filter it out also, whatever filter you apply, 
only one record is present over there you will be getting the only one record as a output from a normal typical sql uh, database i'm saying so we can consider a chunk as a row over here in a vector database so like if we if we are not chunking the whole so let's take an example like uh, we are uh, building a rack system for a entire story right or novel which can, which may be containing lots of chapters uh, and lots of uh, uh, chapters over there sub -chap sub chapters also will be available uh, so we need to chunk like chunking maybe like a uh, uh, user defined thing where you can chunk for each and every chapter or each and every topic or each and every paragraph uh, we, uh, for the each and every use cases it may change after uh, chunking out right each chunk will be stored as a row so only if the question is related to that particular chunk it may retrieve only that particular chunk so llms are also will be more useful for finding the answers from the very small amount of chunks uh, then if you if you are not chunking right uh, like if we hit any query to the vector database it will be retrieving the whole story book then if we pass the whole story book to the llm right basically it uh, llms have some limitations in words also it may uh, it may contains around only 12 12000 words or 38000 words only but if you think you have a 1 lakh words in your content right then it will be so harder for it to analyze so only we are actually exactly chunking okay Yeah. what is embedding what embedding captures right embedding captures the exact meaning of the words in a in a vector format vector format is nothing but a, a list containing a floating points uh, that that is all that length of the floating point is also a fixed number for each and every model it it may differ but it is a fixed point if you if we are passing a paragraph to it also it will giving a 500 dimension i mean 500 length uh, list if we are passing only two words also it will be giving a same 500 length uh, words so only it is known as the index so you, you, end of the day if a user asking que questions it will be able to find the distance between the two vectors and uh, retrieve the chunks which is present in the vector database right the, this is what basically each and every uh, text we pass to the embedding model it is going to understand i mean extract the meaning and save uh, the meaning in the uh, vectors that is the main uh, thing over here and storing when it's storing right uh, uh, after generating embedding the the effective method is like uh, storing it in vector databases uh, it is a separate database where we will store embedding as a index and the value as the chunk what we have uh, we, what we have in the documents right basically these benefits are fa fast retrieval uh, because it is not going to search from all the data what we have given as an input it is going to uh, check from a limited uh, uh, limited data points over around it and when it is comes to scalability also it, uh, it it may be 1 million data points also it is easily scalable we can give it as an input it will be storing in the vector database and retrieving that also it is so fast because it is not going to iterate over each and every row and check and it is also search optimized because uh, each and every database has its own searching techniques but uh, uh, the most popular things have a good search optimized uh, algorithm so it is able to retrieve so fast okay right uh, let's see this much time i was just uh, saying you uh, what will be happening if you give a uh, input what will the each and every chunk will be happening let's see a simple uh, visual implementation okay basically this is the text uh, text from the document which the user provides let's consider that uh, this whole paragraph as a uh, user's input then if he, this input is uh, given here right that will be converted as it, it as a chunk chunk is none other than here we are converting like uh, uh, each and every point as a chunk but because this is a small paragraph if we consider as a whole story we can consider each and every paragraph as a chunk or each and every subtopic as a chunk so each and every uh, paragraph i mean the whole paragraph is conver converted as chunk then every chunk is then converted into embeddings each and every embeddings what may be its length it will be converted into the same length of embeddings uh, basically it captures the meaning from this uh, text what we have provided and then once the embedding is ready right we will be storing it in the vector database basically the here we can see the documents what we have chunked is in the as in the value side and this will be in the like an index act as an index to the values the embeddings what we provide then once this is this is ready uh, our part one is somewhat completed like uh, uh, the initial part of loading the data is totally completed from the back end side 
here after uh, we will have some front ends where the user can ask some queries uh, then queries will be processed that that's comes the uh, retrieval i mean retrieving the data part actually uh, until part 1 do you have any questions or yes Okay. Uh, actually, she is asking like, what is the optimal chunk size? Uh, how can you decide it? Actually, uh, there are actually currently we are uh, the industry is using like a fixed chunk length. Like uh, it will be like uh, thousand characters. Uh, after each and every thousandth character, uh, it will make a chunk, and the next line will start. Uh, there is a, also currently itself they are using like an overlap technique where the last. a uh, few characters like uh, if you are chunking 1000 characters right last 100 characters of the uh, first chunk and the first 100 characters of the second chunk will be the same because the llm could be able to easily understand the co continuity of the chunk uh, this is what happening as in the chunk chunk, chunk strategy but there are so many uh, strategies over here like semantic strategy semantic chunking that uh, that process is all available but currently this is uh, more popular over here but th that is all comes under uh, the advanced rag systems i have one more question uh, so the part where uh, that chunk was converted into uh, some vector representation that array of numbers uh, so um, so we we are talking about multilingual uh, ma sorry multi language uh, mm -hmm. uh, support and we building chatbot right so are there uh, uh, like the are there algorithms which also understand other languages to convert the text into vector representations actually that is uh, that is also possible but we need to have the uh, what i mentioned right there is a model which is a single task performer model we need to train the model according to that language so once that is ready we can use multiple i mean the specific language what you mentioned so for if if i have to do something in japanese then i have to have my own custom model which can convert japanese text into the vectors yes yes that will be the most effective method over here okay yes thank you well can you please pass the mic pass the mic same question okay uh um, okay so my question is very simple uh the con conversion to embeddings to i mean sorry the from uh, words to embedding right mm. that is taken care by the embedding model mm. how does it understand the uh, relationship between the query and the embedding so basically the query can be anything isn't ah, it yes let's say i say what what are the types of uh data models or something mm. like that mm -hmm. so how does it understand the question and then convert it to an embedding and matches it with the data that is there in the um document yeah actually uh, i will split this question into two parts the second part is how how will it matches with the document in the vector database we will see that in the second part retrieving the data uh, the first part is uh, you are asking how how the question is converted into the embedding actually the embedding model itself trained in the way like that it will generate some embeddings where uh, similar words or similar categories of words should be uh, in the nearer position L we need to consider the embeddings as a data point we will see that in a live example uh, also uh, basically the embedding models is to uh, generate data uh, for similar data it must generate similar data points or very nearer data points uh, if uh, some data uh, if we are talking about some food then food category food embeddings will be different and we are talking about technology technologies uh, category will be somewhat different the creation of the embedding values inside the vectors right that will be different uh, over there so with that we can easily match what what is the user's query like that we could able to match right and one more question is uh, uh, as we mentioned right we were speaking about the japanese models and things like that mm. uh are the current vector databases in the market uh are already trained with such multilingual uh, way or is it like it's just trained on english now uh, are you asking about uh, current database or the embedding model any vector database 
vector database so you are responsibility to bring a embedding model in front of vector database also isn't it uh, actually there are two methods one is the database itself take care of the embedding model yeah. uh, currently most popular uh, database have the support of english uh, i guess uh, but uh, as every uh, data vector database supports our own uh, embedding models also so both are uh, i mean possible if we have the custom trained embedding model it's uh, well and good we can easily do it but when it comes to vector database embedding model uh, it is uh, when it comes to other languages we need to check it out and okay, see thanks thank you yes. thank you okay After, when it comes to second part right now the, the now the data is ready in our database or a retriever engine then the user will be giving us as a question over here like uh, you see her question right then that question will be passed to the retriever engine that retriever engine will be like, retriever engine is, in, engine is none other than the vector database i mentioned here when i pass the question over here to vector database right that will be giving me the value which we saw which we stored in the vector database which is related to the question that question will be i mean that question and the answer retrieved from the vector database will be passed to the prompt template over here that prompt template will be exactly passed to the llm that llm will be answering is in a high level so that if a user is giving a question to a chatbot in your website right the llm will be instantly start responding to the from searching the data from the data source what we provide so that user feels like we, we it is a live lively interacting with the llm with the real time data let's see how in in deep dive also here is the embedding model based on pre existing word to uh vec library or custom conversation if so then what is the feature space of the word embedding sorry i didn't get the question sorry is the embedding model based on pre existing word to vc library mm -hmm. or custom conversation if so then what is the feature space of the word embedding maybe i don't know about the question what they are asking but i will i will consume i mean i will consume the question in my understanding like uh, she is asking like i mean anybody is asking like uh, is the word embedding uh, is trained from word to vec model i guess uh, if so is she asking like that means uh, it may be any model we can use over there it is not only on word to vec uh, uh, model and uh, the second part i will understand like uh, the feature space i consider as the vector dimension what they are mentioning over here maybe like uh, i'm not sure about the uh, word to x dimension but the basic dimension is 768 is the length of the vectors basically she is asking what will be the length of this uh, vector over here maybe it is 768 and when it comes to uh, open ai model they use around 1000 1024 i think so 1024 uh, uh, values over there Uh, basically that is all depends on the model what they use for embeddings uh, that is on the embedding space okay. hey thank you thank you okay let's continue with the okay the, we are we were seeing the questions and it will be passed to the vector database if uh, the question and the answer will be passed to the prompt then it will be passed to the llm to answer so it will be in a lively manner okay let's if we deep dive into that also right uh each and every question from the user again will be converted into an embedding that embedding right that embedding will be again searched in the vector databases we, here we have the index li index like value as an embeddings so that basically what it does is it will calculate the distance between this vector and this vector if it if the both the vectors are very closer to each other right it will retrieve the exact value of that so uh, if the, we can see i have manually set it here but if we see the values of this embedding and uh, this first embeddings are more similar right so it, it will be retrieving this uh, this chunk eventually in uh, in background like uh, we are asking the question llm has an over enthusiastic like right this also contains the llm has an over enthusiastic so basically it will be understanding the meaning of that and storing it as vectors so these two vectors are more similar and basically if both are more similar then the distance between the two points will be will be so nearer exactly to say we are doing a distance between two points uh, for a rag system itself we are we are calculating the distance between two points which all the points very nearer to the questions we are retrieving the value of that point 
and giving that to an LLM so that it could answer by seeing that value which is uh, provided. Once that is done right, the, related to the question, that the chunk which will be coming out right, that will be the value of that. It will not send an embedding to the LLM. It will be sending the value which is stored on the embedding to the prompt template. Then the prompt template will be passed to the LLM to answer. I think this hopes uh, this makes you more understandable. This much time I was talking about vector database, vector database, vector database. Actually, this is the visual representation, 3D visual representation of uh, vector database where each and every point, I mean, each and every chunk will be converted into a data point, as I mentioned. And each and every data point will be stored like points over here, right? Like if we see the point wolf and dog and cat are more nearer because that all comes under uh, animal category. So these three points are more nearer. When it comes to apple, banana, that all comes under fruits category. So these both are more nearer. If we consider this cat as a question, right? It will be retrieving the dog as the answer because when the cat's distance between all other points, dog is more nearer to it. So it will be ca calculating the distance between the two points. That's all happening inside the vector database. So so only we don't need to ca check all other vector points in uh, as a question. If if we have the question as a cat, right, it will be directly placing that vector point in the n-dimensional space. Here we have represented as 3D. After placing it in the n-dimensional space, it will just calculate. The, I mean put a circle over here, what are the points more nearer to this cat, and retrieve the top nearer points. That's all happening inside the vector database. Once that is done right, uh, here I also wanted to mention the prompting techniques, because as this much time we have seen like uh, uh, how to convert the documents, chunking it, chunking into embeddings, uh, storing the embeddings, how to, again, the question convert into embeddings and all this, right? After all these retrieving the questions, uh, answers from the database, all we are going to put it in a prompt template. This is a very important area. Actually, here I have uh, say, shown an RRR prompting technique. This is actually found by one of our thought worker named Raju Kandasamy. Basically, this RRR refers to setting up a role rule response to the LLM. Basically, this acts, uh, the LLMs all acts as a very genius because it is trained on the internet scale data. It is expert at all the uh, all roles. So we are setting it as a setting it a role. So so only it can easily figure out, okay, this is my job, I want to do this. That, that is the main thing. Like role we have set it here, right? It is a QA chatbot where you will be facing the real-time customers. What is your rule? Your rule is to answer only based on the content what is provided to you. Don't uh, I mean don't provide any other information which is not related to the content because if we are providing some content right then it uh, then the user asking some questions like uh, uh, how to uh, prepare something how how to uh, uh, illogical question which is not related to your company right because you are building a chatbot to your company where your company's data will be as a data source to you so it should not answer other than that here this is actually this rule can act as a guardrail to the LLM also. So what is the response? I mean, response will be in an interactive way to the users. So these three important things should be the uh, important in prompting level. Then after this, we will be adding a user query and then content. So it could be answering uh, what, like uh, it will be answering like what we are expecting. Okay, I think this much time we will be seeing the RAG level. Now we come to the multilingual support. When it comes to multilingual support, uh, today we are just taking up the Indic languages alone, Indian-based languages, where we will be able to uh, convert English into any Indian languages or any Indian languages to English in text level or speech level. For that, we are using an uh, uh, application called Bashini, which is developed by Indian government, actually, uh, where they, are, they have iOS and Android application. Also, they provide a free API for developers. So that they they can they can give a source language what is the language in, they are giving as an input and what is the expected target language and the text what you wanted to be translated these three things if you give if you give then it will be giving us a targeted language output basically it is available in the AP level also uh, you just need to uh, sign, I will share this deck to you you just need to sign into the application and uh, once you can retrieve the uh, uh, APIs right. Uh, we could easily translate from any languages. It contains around uh, 13, 16 languages, I guess. Uh, we could see that in a demo. After that, uh, okay, we'll see some demo. Okay, right, okay. Basically, first we start with uh, 
uh, what to say bashani uh, the language translation first part important part is uh, okay i think now you can see i think so yes right then first we need to install uh, bashani translator also uh, then dot env file store for storing all the api keys uh, once it is installed and uh, uh, imported right we, just these are the languages which, which it supports like assami bengali uh, english gujarati hindi uh, sanskrit tamil malayalam after that is it is a simple function where we can call the uh, bashani uh, as an input and provide the source language and the target language once that is done if we pass the text right it could be able to do easily i think here i have translated uh, hi hello i mean hello how are you from english to hindi i think uh, the output may not be visible for the live audience i think so um, that is what uh, uh, happening here once that is done right uh, after that uh, i have used uh, yeah basically in this also we need a llm at, uh, at the end so uh, we we are using uh, llm studio uh, which is uh, acted as an uh, local hosted uh, yeah, llm model where we can uh, where we can use the model as an endpoint basically you are going to uh, just uh, load the model in our local system like uh, any open source model like llama model anything and get a endpoint uh, over here as a local host and then once you set the con context and the prompt template over here right we will be passing this uh, pass llm which will be containing the question and the context alone once this is done it will be retrieving as uh, uh, um, what is the expected output from the rack basically i have done a simple very simple uh, rack system where actually i have what what is the population of delhi and so i have some uh, given some information uh, about the delhi also uh, here actually this is called the question over here and this is called the context actually here i have manually inserted the context over here but in when it comes to rack system right this context will be provided from the vector database that is the main difference over here once that is done, it will be able to give the output. Here it has given Delhi officially in the national capital territory. Okay. It has it, it has given the answer, exact answer what we are expected. Okay, sorry. This is hello, according to the context you have provided, the current metro population of the Delhi is in twenty twenty four is uh, around uh, three crore thirty eight lakhs it has given. This is the expected answer which is given. I think people over here can't see, I think so. Uh, but what I'm mentioning here is uh, basically the LLM's uh, duty over here is only to accept the question and the context and uh, answer related uh, to the question from the context. That is the LLM's duty over here. Once that is done here, right? We are using uh, when it comes to RAG uh, implementation, we are using PyPDF2 uh, to extract the uh, text from the PDF what I have provided. And basically, I have provided here is a twelfth uh, PDF computer science book where i have extracted all the text and i have saved it in the extracted text.txt file once that is done right i have used langchain text splitter over here uh, to exactly chunk the content what is in the text file uh, to the to set the chunks manual chunk size right we have set it here 1000 and the chunk overlap is 200 over here so this is the manual chunking process so that uh, each and after each and every thousandth character it will just chunk after that, the last 200 of the first chunk and the second chunk will be the same to understand the context which I have mentioned before. But uh, this is the ex uh, exact thing what's happening in the chunking part. After that, once uh, completes, right, we are uh, currently using Chroma DB as a vector database over here. So once the chunk and the uh, embeddings are ready, we will be storing it over here. Uh, actually, as uh, already a qu thought, uh, asked a question, right? Uh, this uh, Chroma DB itself take caring of the embedding part. Once we provide uh, uh, the data over here, right? Data and the IDs, it will be easily able to embed by itself and store it in the vector database. Using uh, vector database embedding model is somewhat beneficial for us because they take care of the updation of the embedding model. Each and every model will generate a unique vector points. So once you change the embedding model, right, you need to change this data which is stored in the embedding, I mean vector database also. So that only after some time, if we updated a embedding model, if somebody asks a question, right, that will also convert it into embedding. So it would be easy to ca capture the meaning. So end of the day, if we are, if we are using a, a, I mean a vector database embeddings, right, that will be beneficial in this point. 
and if we want to uh, use our own custom domain uh, uh, custom domain train the embedding models also we can be we can use it over here once this is ready right i have just inserted a 12th computer science uh, book uh, once this is ready we are we will be asking like who is the founder of uh, i mean a founder of python and uh, basically it will be uh, first initially we will be creating the collection name in the vector database here the name is like rack system i have created once the collection is ready i will be i will be giving collection dot add and giving all the data what we have chunked and pass it to over here once that is ready the the user will be asking a question that uh, question will be passed into collection dot query this collection dot query uh, end of the day will convert it into embedding and the embeddings will be uh, passed to the vector database it will find the nearest point to the question and then it will retrieve the top eight results. This is actually uh, a configurable thing, uh, hyperparameter, which can be changed for our use cases. I have set it over here, uh, eight. Then once that is ready, right, uh, I think this is the eight parts which is retrieved from the vector database, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The, this is the eight things. We will pass the both answer, vector database answer on the question to the LLM over here. Once that we pass it as an LLM, right, that will be giving us a, a text output from uh, i mean text output once the text output is ready right we will pass the text output to the bosni translator so it will be uh, translating into any indic languages what we have already configured this is the overall demo of the multilingual rag chatbot once this is done right okay i think uh, all are clear do you have any questions in the demo or yes please A question from Mohammed Ali. Mm -hmm. Does Bashini API stores or request and response data for their training or any other purposes? Actually, uh, Bashini have their open source model in hugging faces. We can download the models also. Uh, there is a there is a toggle button where we can set uh, track our data or we can also to toggle it off if we if we don't want to track our data. That is a possible thing. Yes. Hey, thanks, Mohamed. I hope you got the answer. So, uh, before my primary question, uh, I want to know, so is there any relation between uh, uh, the length of uh, embeddings mm -hmm. and the length of the chunk? So uh, always the embedding length will be the same, irrespective of the chunk's length, Correct. right? Correct. So, um, Will it be the case even if the chunk length is uh, larger than, I mean, um, is there a maximum length for the chunk? Uh, yes, there are some, sometimes we have that also, because uh, anyway, if we are going to chunk a whole chapter in one embedding, right, that will not be able to capture all the meanings, because it is none other than 500 floating points. It must, if we are passing the questions also, it will, it must be able to again convert into the floating points and then only it is going to match. I think uh, how much the chunk size is reduced that much easily it would be able to capture the meaning from the text and convert it as chunk. I mean, convert it as embeddings. So I think. Uh, my question will be like, uh, whenever we are putting a question, so even that is going to be converted, uh, like that will be chunked. Uh, will it be the case? No, uh, questions will not be going into the chunking process at all. Questions will be converted into embeddings. That embeddings will be passed to the vector database. The vector database is end of the day going to give some results as a output, the text results as the output. Chunk is only to store your large amount of data in an efficient way. That is why chunk is uh, working around here. So whatever the length of the question may be, uh, it won't be chunked at all? No, it, uh, it is not going to chunk. Because... Uh, uh, questions, uh, maybe like your questions may be in a single line or two line question. I hope so. If, if that also, if that you want to give a large amount of, uh, I mean, large size question, right? End of the day, that reflects in the LLM part. LLM should have the capabilities to uh, understand that whole uh, big question. Then only it is going to able to answer uh, you. That's it. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. We are, uh, sorry, I didn't get you. So if you are giving a l very large question, mm -hmm. then uh, based on the models, the token size will be differing and uh, the response will be very uh, inefficient, right? Yes, yes. Okay. 
Uh, I had one question about that uh, embedding. So we said LLM works mostly on text-based data, right? Mm. Uh, so uh, let's say I'm using some RAG system. Mm. Uh, but So we are using RAG because we want to augment LLM with extra functionalities or read our own private mm. uh, kind of data, right? So if, if the private data is something around uh, very numerical, maybe like purchase order history mm -hmm. uh, or some financial transactions, etc., are there models that would co convert even those numerical data back into embeddings or vector representations? Okay, this is a very good question. Actually, this RAG system only mainly implies on unstructured text data. Uh, what you are mentioning all are structured data which is in a stabler format. That That is a different use case. We can build a RAG system over there also, but that is uh, totally uh, a 90 degree different use case. But this is for only the unstructured text data, what we unstructured text image video data, what we have actually. But that is also solved, but it is in a different use case, different uh, kind of mechanism is working over there. One more question. Uh, again, back to the first question that I asked earlier. Uh, so, uh, so RAG, I can see the use cases where you want to uh, train, uh, you want to uh, enhance your LLMs to answer some questions that are specific to our own company data or some uh, specific context. But for this multilingual support, right? If there are uh, models which which can already convert text into embeddings, then I'm assuming there should be LLMs which can automatically do this translation, right? Yes, out of the box. what you are saying is exactly right. Now, in current days itself, LLM are capable of speaking multiple languages. But what I personally thought is when it comes to Indic languages, it is not able to perform that much. Because end of the day, the current models which is available are trained on data like the original data will be in English. That data will be translated to Tamil. Then that Tamil language will be given as a training data. So that much, that is not an effective way of training the multi multi language to a foreign LLM. But when it comes to this uh, uh, Bashini Indic languages, right? That is actually trained on the exact data on, on their own languages. So it is performing better uh, is the exact answer. But that that model which converts the Bashini uh, con converts things into uh, sorry. So Bashini is used to convert from one input language to another uh, output language, right? Uh, the embedding should be capable of storing the converted language. Is that right? Or as a vector form? Actually, in current use case, we are not at all dealing with the uh, multi-language and storing that in vector database. Most of the things work around English. At the end, the output will only be converted into the multiple language. I mean, other language, what we are expecting. It is the end of the day, you get an output, you just put it in a translator, it will give giving the user in their own language. Okay, okay. That's happening, yes. Okay, we, uh, okay. let's see uh, a minimal difference between the uh, fine tuning and drag. Actually, both will be having the same base LLM. Base LLM may be any Llama, any Llama 2 or any Llama 3 or any open source model or any paid model. The base model will be same. But when it comes to fine tuning, right? Uh, fine tuning is, uh, is a very heavy task. Like we need to prepare the data set for our own task. If we are making LLM to speak about our company, right? We must have a hell lot of data about our company, like a question answer pair. It depends on the task also. If if you want, if somebody is asking an exact question about something, then it must be trained on the question answer pair data set. For preparing the data set, it takes a lot of time. For training it with uh, efficient parameters, uh, we need to. It, it takes a lot of time, and it is uh, it is very GPU intensive. We, we need lots of uh, GPUs for that to train also. And uh, at the end, uh, it is a time-consuming process. Uh, this RAG system can be built very easily. Like uh, we having the base LLM over here, and uh, if we build a vector database and the embedding uh, around this data, what we have, right? Then it is a uh, becomes a company-specific uh, chatbot for us. So it is very easy to market also for to us. Basically, this is the main difference between the RAG and the uh, fine-tuned LLMs. Do you have any questions? Uh, there is one question from the participant. On what basis each word is converted into scalars? This word to scalar conversation, conversion is based on built custom mathematical operation or already existing machine learning feature extraction algorithm. It is uh, based on already machine learning algorithm models are available. Uh, as I already mentioned, it is a single task performer. 
where your input will be a text, high level English text, it will, the output will be uh, vectors. Basically, that embedding model will be trained on massive text data and how to uh, convert it into vectors and all, it will be trained. But end of the day, on, on our point of developer point of view, we'll be seeing it as like a machine learning embedding model, uh, which will be getting an input as text data and giving an output as vectors. That's Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this is somewhat, uh, we reached the last part. This is the advanced rack system. Uh, this much time we were seeing the demo and everything in a, uh, it is a very, very minimal level uh, rack system. When it comes to advanced, right, there are n number of features we need to look, look into it. Like, first of all, we, let's, uh, when it comes to text extraction, extraction, right, that itself we need to give a lots of con concentration over there because each in the PDF, what we provide as an input, right, that may contain some table. Table will be, if we extract the text alone from the table, it will be a line-wise uh, text. It will not be, it will not give a sense of a table itself. So we need to handle that case. If uh, a PDF contain an image, if that image contains a lot of text, right, we need to handle that uh, that case also. So that comes in the text. There are a number of cases. I'm giving some examples alone. That is from text extraction. Format understanding is your your data file may be HTML format, for maybe a JSON format, but you need to be able to extract the crux of the text and make it into a text text file so that only it will be able to understand very easily. Then comes the guardrail system. Guardrail systems are none other than none other than like in a user point of view. If a user is uh, came to your website, right, he 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 will be mostly asking questions related to your website, not any other thing like how to prepare. Uh, uh, bomb or something like that. It must not answer, actually. So there comes the guardrail system so that the LLM should not answer any other things uh, unrelated to the your website's content. Here itself, we have seen in the prompting, right? We have set up a guardrail over here in the prompt level. Like, you must only answer based on the content provided. This is itself a guardrail, but it, it is in the prompt level. But there are some libraries and advanced techniques for guardrails before a user asking a question. Is that question very legal or uh, ethical question to ask uh, something? We can put it as in a guardrail system. Then comes the chunking strategy. As already asked, we are now uh, doing a manual or a, a systematic chunking where it reaches the thousandth character, it will just chunk. But there are semantic chunking or a topic wise chunking or a topic wise chunking is none other than if you take a story points, right? If you just drag it up, then the title of the uh, top, I mean, story will be the heading, and each and every uh, chapter will be having a subheading. And uh, we need to store the chunk in that format also. What is what is your uh, uh, subheading title? What is your chapter's title? If that if we do that at all, that improves uh, accuracy over here. Then here we also come with the uh, domain specific embedding model. As we, if we take an example for uh, building a uh, research rag, I mean research chatbot for a researcher, right? He is from a healthcare domain. Then if the embedding model which converts the text into numbers is trained on medical domain data, right? It will be more easy and effective for storing that data points in the vector database. So if we ask the question related to the healthcare domain also, it will be easily able to pick up the uh, points which are near in the vector database. So uh, when it comes to embedding models also, it is a, a, a advanced technique over here. Then if we use a high efficient vector database, uh, high efficient vector data means I am mentioning the point of searching technique what the vector database you see. We have currently we have cosine similarity as a searching, I mean, uh, calculating the distance between two points, but there are um, more techniques for uh, calculating the distance between two points. Um, then I have mentioned the prompting techniques as I mentioned uh, uh, RRR prompting over here, but there are n number of prompting techniques for each and every use case. Uh, prompts can be changed in any level. Uh, so prompting, advanced prompting techniques can also be implemented over here. Then uh, efficient LLM I have mentioned over here is too because uh, e e the LLM context length may be a variable thing because uh, like uh, mm, sometimes the LLM context length is 8,000 uh, words only. But uh, our chunk contains uh, 9,000 or 10,000 words, then everything goes collapsed. It, it cannot uh, able to answer itself. So we need to uh, handle the ch um, chunk also in a smaller way. And uh, sometimes the LLM should also be able to answer the question only later to the context. So it must be able to uh, understand the prompt which we are giving. So LLM efficiency also more important over here. Exception handling is something like, uh, why I have mentioned it here? If, uh, if a user is coming to your website asking who is the founder of your uh, company, right? 
then sometimes the data will not be present in the uh, pdf what we have provided itself then uh, he's uh, his question is legal uh, is uh, whatever he ask is not something unrelated to your company but you don't have the answer then why how we are going to handle that that that, that technique also we need to check at the end of the day we it is very very important for a, a rag evaluation for each and every step what we are improving over here right how we are going to evaluate the rag that is the main main technique if we build a rag system we, we can build a rag system within six lines of code but when it comes to evaluation right there comes the important uh, important parts each and everything improving from this uh, is your evaluate uh, the things changes may what you have made is improving a rag system or uh, it is not increasing your ring accuracy we need to measure right there comes the rags these are all the uh, advantages of uh, i mean advanced rag techniques should be implemented before going into a production level things after this any other questions that's it from my side um are there any uh, automated ways of uh, chunking uh, for the chunking process like how we how we have data pipelines right now for mm -hmm. Mm. let's say storing the database yes, from, yes. St storing the data from multiple sources when it comes to chunking right we currently we have an automated way of doing a character level chunking uh, exactly 1000 character we will chunk but we can set up a pipeline like uh, again we will be using an llm or any language models over there where it must be able to understand the context of the content what you have provided and it must have its own we must uh, give it in a prompt level to give a strategy to it how must you chunk the data then it will be giving a chunked data to us i mean semantically chunked data because like 1000th uh, uh, i mean 1000th character may be in between a sentence or in between a word also uh, but when it comes to uh, semantic chunking means each and uh, a paragraph may contain two important topics that each and every topic should be split into two uh, i mean two separate chunks that all can be handled but it can be automated in a pipeline where we will be providing a input a n number of input data it will be giving us the exact semantically chunked data as an output any other questions uh so uh, this uh, we are talking about this embedding models and libraries and all right like mm -hmm. uh, um so most of our questions and other things are going to execute in some of the llms uh, something uh, mm -hmm. which are hosted in server this embedding models like uh, before chunking and uh, storing it in our vector de de uh, db uh, so this will run in our local systems right or as like something like a libraries yes a uh, local system so don't have any communication with llm or something like that ah uh, this won't have a communication with llms and all uh, it is a separate model which will be running on your local instance or uh, any server what you are going to deploy it is a very uh, when we are comparing to uh, uh, llm with the embedding model it is 100x smaller uh, if a basic llm itself uh, uh, real life uh, exa good model will be uh, uh, 30 uh, 30 gb some somewhat but this embedding model will be around 300 mb that so it is easy to uh, host in our uh, system itself and uh, get the output from the embedding model so when we are using this uh, some of the examples from hugging face uh, embedding models and all it will also run in the our local systems okay yes it will be able to run okay thanks a question which is relevant to uh, languages okay if we are uh, right now you are speaking about the english language that's fine if mm. we are mm. going to train a data which is of a different language for an example let us say tamil if you are chunking in uh, based on the characters right for an example 100 characters you are chunking off uh, if we take uh, tamil and all we have uh, the characters will be for a single letter we have a, a, a multiple characters mm. in it so uh, how it is going to handle the, in the behind the screen that is one thing which i want to ask uh, when it comes to other languages we need to check and see how it is going to chunk uh, tamil and all i can understand each and every uh, letter will be having three or more characters uh but i hope so when it comes to uh, other than character level chunking right uh, actually uh, one thing is like we are overlapping the text so that it will be somehow will be between the two chunks similarly the other thing is like uh, if we do a semantic level uh, chunking method then it will be easily the problem will be sorted out it will avoid we can avoid the problem another question is uh, uh, this particular chatbot is actually which we are speaking about the supporting multiple language mm -hmm. I mean, like through bashing 
so when you are explaining you have uh, given a context that uh, the end output will be a kind of bashni is acting actually acting as a translator and it is translating the output to the hindi or else tamil or like that so obviously in real world case uh, the user who is actually prompting the chatbot he also will be communicating in the local language obviously bashni you will be acting as a initial input to translate it right how much confident that is actually converting into the exact rate whether the uh, llm which is trained for the bashni is actually accurately converting into it based on your experience give your uh, inputs on that maybe i i, I... as i have used it bashni is something like uh, as i already mentioned it is trained on the exact data what we have i like uh, if it is a tamil language uh, model then it is trained on the exact tamil mo- uh, tamil script it is not translated from english to any other language mo- i mean any other languages so it is able to perform very well compared to other models but nowadays llms itself picking up uh, to speak in multiple languages but uh, still the training data to that is not that much sufficient so i think that is good I mean, Vashni is performing better. Yes. Uh, another one question, uh, last which is supporting her question, actually. Uh, for an example, let us say we have uh, provided a support chatbot for our website. Let us keep it in uh, that way. So we have a uh, lot of orders and such kind of stuff where ha- handling means. So most probably there is a kind of a structured data, as you said. At the same time, it is also performing some support relevant activities for an example kind of uh, through knowledge base, it is also providing something means this knowledge base is where the rack comes in place so that it can support the uh, things. Same way, same at the same time, user also can prompt the things which is relevant to his order status or such kind of activities, right? So how that this both things can be bridged and handle it. uh this can be handled but uh, when it comes to handling the structured data there is different technique itself for that uh, maybe it can, we can uh, give a high level query uh, then it will be re- retrieving the exact sql i mean sql uh, rows as an output to us so from that we can pass both the uh, i mean unstructured data as output and the structured data output into llm model so that the prompting i mean prompting level should be different and it it must be handled differently so as we pass this all data to the llm then it could be able to handle uh, like a you i mean like a high level english language itself the structured data can also be given as an output over there I, uh, my my question is uh, in uh, while using chatbots that use llm uh, let's say i ask a question um, in, in in a public domain i ask some question saying who is the founder of google and then it will give some explanation uh, after that immediately i say uh, can you brief more on the previous question it can still retain that context and give me more uh, relevant answer about sundar pichai right now if if we are using rag to do this for a, a private data or our organization data so i'm asking like who's the uh, founder of thoughtworks based on some document that you uploaded and then you get a response now if my second question is can you tell me more about thoughtworks founder using rag how does it maintain that uh, context actually uh, are you asking will the rag will be able to answer uh, about the thoughtworks uh, founder from the before question mm, yes. yes it can handle but i understand the question in different way like uh, once can you explain more about the founder then will it not uh, go to the again vector database and fetch the details but uh, we can automate the way like uh, is that from the chat history point of view or are, are we asking or is the new question from the user we can uh, we can easily figure out both the questions and then if we want to pass this question to a vector database or we need to con- continue the chat history point of view itself so that is doable uh but that is not a, i mean i i think i have not implemented and shown here that but it's that is doable uh, both the things can be done so in, in that case uh, in in our in in our system we would have to maintain a chat history is it so where would the chat history the be? chat history will be a temporary session based uh, session based chat history but that is stored on the uh, llm level or application wise level itself that is done on a, if we are deploying the rack system we in our server itself it will be stored i mean it is not a permanent solution i am saying it is a session based chat history 
and somehow there must be some mapping which which is capable of taking the second question which is can you explain more about that person yes. with whom you answered and then it has to convert it to some relevant vector yes right? yes Hey, there is one question from Saran Iraivan. Okay. Do embedding model hallucinate? Do embedding model? Uh, I think no. Embedding models don't hallucinate because uh, it is like uh, how how well we trust uh, typical single task performer machine learning model, right? Is is we uh, could you see or detecting a model? I mean, uh, object in a object right that much accurate it will be it it is cannot be hallucinating because it is not a generating a new content it is just converting a existing text data into uh, a vector form so it is not going to hallucinate in any way if it, when it comes when we are speaking about any new generation part right like image generation text generation video generation anything that may can help hallucinate but when it comes to image and video hallucination is very good then only we can uh, generate very interesting images but the embedding models will not hallucinate. Maybe the accuracy of the model or understanding of the text may differ. That depends on the percentage accuracy level also that is there. But it cannot hallucinate, I just mean. Hey, thank you, Saran. Another question. Can you brief more on the God railway system? What, what to brief? Guardrail system. Guardrail system, okay. Uh, when it comes to guardrails, right, guardrails are nothing but giving, setting a rules to the LLMs. Basically, uh, we are uh, we LLMs are capable of answering anything because it is trained on internet scale data. But we are deploying it in our website, right? Then it must be able to uh, work like our uh, our employee. It should not answer like uh, I know everything. You can ask me any any question. It should not handle in uh, in that way. It will be uh, if you are asking anything related to another. I mean, not related to our company, right? It must say like sorry, I I I only know about. Uh, ThoughtWorks, or if I am saying as an example, I know only know about ThoughtWorks. So uh, it, the capable of saying that, right, accepting the question or uh, rejecting the question, that guardrail plays the role of that. That's all. Do anyone have any questions? Thank you. Thank you all for joining, and uh, thank you. Srijayan for uh, giving a very good uh, like uh, talk on this. Uh, I believe uh, we will have more sessions going forward. And uh, yeah, I think uh, this AI and the other things are uh, ruling the world now. So we will go, we will take more sessions on the AI side itself going forward. And uh, yeah, I think uh, we will have more participants next time. And people who are uh, interested to give some talks, please let us know or the, like uh, you can uh, reach out to us uh, so that we can plan for any talks uh, going forward. Thank you all once again for joining. Thank you. Thank you once again for coming. OK, let's answer that also. OK. Is he asking LLM is behind guard?